Hello, welcome to Dad Tech. My name is Mark Braxton, and today we have a review of the Insta360 GO 3 and also the comparison with the GoPro Hero 11 because I've had that one for about six months. And this is an honest opinion. I haven't been paid to do this. All the reviews I've seen so far have all been sponsored by the company. This is not sponsored by Insta360, all bought for and paid with my money. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion, my positives and negatives. Um, a lot of the reviews out there, you'll find a lot of positives and few negatives. So I will be discussing it all. Please enjoy. Okay, let's get straight into it. So I've had the Insta360 for a couple of weeks now. I've delayed this review a little bit because I want to use it a bit more and a bit more and a bit more to get some different experiences under my belt. And for the most part, I've really enjoyed the use of this little camera. And just look at it, it is so small, so tiny. Um, there's so many scenarios that you can use this for that really the GoPro, which I have right here, it's just a different form factor, right? Very similar capabilities. This one does a little bit more, but I'm just, I love this little thing, this tiny, tiny, little form factor. Um, I didn't know this product existed, so I didn't know about the Go 1, the Go 2. I kept getting a lot of emails, the viral emails that Insta360 was sending out around the time, uh, right before they released. I'm like, oh, what is this new product that they're gonna release on this date? And then I saw the releases and I saw, uh, or I saw the release videos. And then I saw the YouTubers put all their reviews up at the same time, the day of the release. And was very intrigued by this product. Now, I honestly didn't think I was gonna enjoy it as much as I did. Yes, there's some negatives, some great positives, but I really didn't think I was going to get the most out of this. I thought, okay, I'll give it a try and end up enjoying it more. There's a few videos that I really, really liked the look of, uh, of what they did. One is, Kinnan. What's the YouTuber photographer's name? What's the YouTuber personality who is a photographer? Uh, is Peter McKinnon. Okay, cut. Okay, I just had to Google who this was. One video by Peter McKinnon that I really liked the day that it came out and he showed this, him driving in like a vintage truck and in so many different scenarios. So I kind of try to replicate that and it gave me a bunch of ideas of how I could actually use this camera. So I went on Amazon, bought it that day, came a few days later and then had a few try out. A few scenarios, I started out taking this to my gym and wearing it for a workout just to kind of get a rough idea of what it felt like. I'd done the same thing with a GoPro and I'll reference that later on, but that was one scenario. Took it to a mall and did a little video there. That was kind of like my second outing, uh, different scenarios, but with the family again, this is Braxton family and that's the orientation of this um, technology YouTube videos that we do. Tried it in that scenario, it was great. Fourth of July in my brother-in-law's pool. I really want to see how this did for water shots compared to the GoPro, because I have used that one uh, in water quite a lot. Took it to Bass Pro shops with my family just to see really just to take it. Uh, I really wanted to take my son there and I thought, okay, let's take this and, and see how that works out. I also attached it to my drone and I'll reference that as well. So that's the, a few different scenarios I used the Go 3 in. So it's very versatile and the fact that it is waterproof is fantastic, or at least this is waterproof when you add it into its case magnetically. This is water resistant but the actual little camera itself is waterproof. So, uh, iPhones these days are waterproof, I think is the right way to put it. Definitely water resistant, but I'm sure they're waterproof. Having a mobile camera, let's say, that you can put in water came very useful when I took it to a few different places, but specifically when I went to um, a place in Vegas, a mall in Vegas, where there's like a water feature, I'll put the footage up and you can see different ways in which I used it. You know, you don't really want to be doing that with your, your phone, especially if it's your, you know, if it's dirty water or water, you're not quite uh, want to be putting your personal device in. Putting this in, perfectly fine, and I loved it. What this comes with, hat mount, so you can put this here and put it in the back. I kind of felt a little bit goofy with this on, but uh, I do like the idea of having it in a little, you know, POV like that. I did wear it a few times in the car. That was kind of cool. Um, most of the time I had it in this setup. So if you can see that, it's basically just a rod with the Insta360 that it comes with connector on the end of it. So that's how I had most of the time. Uh, when I was in the water, I had a floaty on there, but that was kind of my setup. One of the things I like the most about this is how in how discreet this is. You're not walking around with a big camera rig, you're not walking around with your phone, you know, in everyone's face, you're not walking around with a gimbal. If you want, you can walk around like this, and a lot of times I did, I was just walking around, or, where is it? 
there you go. So it is <gasps> magnetically attached because I have the pendant onto my shirt right now and I'll show you that in a second. So putting it, putting it there, people don't notice it. They don't notice they're being filmed and that's, you know, whatever, but more to the fact that it's not drawing too much attention. If I had any of the other things I talked about, a big camera, a gimbal, your phone, just, you know, or you're selfieing, it does draw attention and I'm not really the attention type, especially in public. So having this, and actually my GoPro as well. So I have my GoPro around, it can draw some attention and I've wore this a few times on my chest with a magnetic mount, pretty heavy to do so, but you can. But this can draw attention as small a factor as a GoPro is, it can draw some attention too. Having this, no one either knows you have it or they don't really care because it's just a small little thing, right? Comes with a suction mount. And for the most part, it's okay. At one point I was messing around in my car, dri driving, don't do it, driving and getting different shots. And at one point I put it on my, I think it was the steering wheel and it was there it stuck for a couple of seconds and it dropped and hit me in the guy region oh, the sticky's good and i just really haven't trusted it all that much i think i put up my car at one point i wouldn't trust the camera staying here's one scenario though i did use a sticky pad for i had it in that setup right there so sticky pad got a little cover right here that I put this on my drone and I put it on top and I had it facing forward and I put it underneath facing like that. And yes, you can. Is it light enough? Was the drone fine? Yes. And I got some really cool footage, but I didn't want to keep it on that, that long. If anyone's thinking about this and the idea came from 51 Drones channel, um, the first thing that Russ did was put it on his drone. When you put it on top, it blocked the GPS. So you're flying without GPS. That's never good. Put it underneath and it blocked the downward sensor. And when you're trying to land, that's not good. Actually, when it came down and started waving around, it went, poof, hit the floor. And I dinked the blade. It can be done uh, at your own risk. If it was a bigger drone, maybe, because you can probably put it in a different position where you're not interfering with some of the sensors. But with the DJI Mini 3, it's such a small body, it's kind of hard. There's probably a different way of doing it, but that was, I just wanted to try it. And of course, when I first got it, I put every faith that this going 50 feet in the air wasn't going to give way and it didn't it stayed on that was brand brand new so you'd really want to give this thing a clean which you can do and it gets the sticky going again do it at your own risk i wouldn't probably attach this to the drone there's actually a lot of different ways if you have the gopro mount insta 360 do sell a mount so it's kind of like this when you've got the two prongs coming off it actually it's two prongs right here at the bottom so then it's compatible to all the gopro mounts that would be a better solution. Put a little sticky pad with the GoPro three feet on there and add it that way. So there you go. This is kind of, it's metal, so it's a little bit heavy. Not the lightest if you're adding it to a drone. And of course, the other big way of using this is in the action pod, I think they call it. And basically that is the form factor of a GoPro. Similar size, right? Similar weight, but this flip screen is pretty cool. The 11 does have the front facing screen. The difference right there. So 11, has the front facing screen, but this has this big screen right here. And yeah, I mean, I like this. This is a good way of doing it. It could be a little bit different. It could be used in a different way, but for the most part, if you're vlogging, having it in this setup, it's great. You can line up your shot really good with a big screen like this. This little selfie screen is kind of fine. It gives you a rough idea of what you're shooting. Of course, the back one is perfectly fine. You know what? I don't have a preference between the two. I think they both work pretty well. That's kind of cool though, the way that they did that and innovated. Secondary to that, you've got the camera. You take it off, put it where you need to. Basically, you're able to see whatever you need to in that screen. It's kind of in some, some inception level stuff right there where you're looking at yourself. I like it. Again, they're innovation. So from what I understand, the, the two didn't have any of this stuff. The two had this, I don't know what else it came with, but the fact that Insta360 decided to create this thing, include it, not have it as an extra accessory. People are very used to the, Go, the GoPro type form factor, which this gives you. In this setup, there's a lot you can do. There's a lot you control. One example, not only have I worn this to the gym and wore it myself in my chest in a few different places, I put this on my trainer, Jenna, shout out, and she wore this and given it to somebody with the pendant on. So in this kind of setup, 
she didn't really care. She was pretty happy. She, you know, it's it's cool to to see a workout from her point of view and having this on her chest. It's light. You wouldn't know it was there. And someone's going to be more than obliged to to wear something like this as opposed to, hey, do you mind putting this GoPro on your chest and put this thing? So I do have that whole setup where you can put this around your neck with some magnetic mounts. It's the the snap-on mounts that I have. I think it's snap-on, not snap-on. That's wrenches and stuff. It's the green one. It's I'll figure out which one it is, but it's it's I've got that whole setup where you can have this um, on your chest, but this is heavy. I've done a workout with this on my chest and it's moving around and, and if you're jumping and I do a lot of cardio stuff, it's you know, it's very heavy on your chest. When I did it with this, you would never know it was on. Secondary to that, I give this to my son and put this on his chest. He walked around, I'll put the footage up when we went to Bass Pro with this on his chest and got some cool POVs from him. And yeah, he like he might put his hand over the lens a little bit just because he's unknowing. He put it on. We got a cool POV from his um, from his point of view. What can you you can do that with a GoPro? You can do that with a phone. You can do that with all these other things. But you can do it with something as small as this. The other great thing is Insta360 throw in all their accessories. Not all of them. You need to get different bundles. But on the cheapest bundle, I think it's the cheapest, 400 bucks. You do get this little thing with that magnetic mount, with a quarter 20 thread in the bottom. You get the suction cup, not the greatest, but it does work for certain things, especially on glass and things like that. You get the hat mount, great. The only, th the only one I was missing was the one with the two feet for the action cam accessories. So I actually ended up buying some cheap ones from Amazon and basically go into the bottom of here. So it's a little bit heavy because then you got the the thread into the feet as opposed to just going directly under the bottom, but it was perfectly fine and worked. Let's move on to the negatives. So my first one is when it's in this form factor, it's hard, you, you can change the, the mode, or at least I don't think you can, right? So if you're recording in a specific format or whatever, it's stuck to that. My recommendation is do the free form one, which is the big, you know, big square and you can do it in post. And using that is actually pretty cool. The thing is, if you don't have it in that and you're in this orientation or this orientation, if you start here, and then for some reason you end up in this orientation or it thinks you're here and you start and then you go to here, then you're gonna be in the wrong orientation. So that kind of sucked. It happened to me a few times. And I also, which is another nit 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 nitpick I have with the GoPro, sometimes you can change the mode and not quite realize it. So the other day when I was at Bass Pro with my son and we were fit and my family and I was videoing some stuff, I thought I was in the, the free form um, format where you've got the big square and you can do it in post later. So I wasn't quite worried about where my orientation was. And then I ended up looking back at the footage and it wasn't. It was in the regular video mode and I couldn't change my orientation in post for some footage. So some of it ended up being horizontal, some of it ended up being vertical. Kind of sucked. So I had to kind of punch into some of it. You'll see the one of my son. Uh, when I actually posted a video about that, I had to punch in and the quality was just terrible because I would had to zoom in on the aspect ratio, the, the 16 by nine ratio or the nine by 16, whatever. And it just didn't look good. The low light performance, I believe you can tweak it and play around with it, but the low light performance in this is not great. At Bass Pro again, from outside going inside, it was super high quality inside, it was good. And then when we went around where the mermaid, mermaids were, and that's a weird sentence to say, but when we were near the mermaids and the aquarium at the Silverton, the quality just took a huge dump. And when I was looking back at it, I'm like, eh, it just it's the same camera, it's the same settings, nothing changed. All I do, was doing was hit and record, but the low light is pretty terrible. Now again, it's a small camera, it's perfectly fine, I get it. I, I know the reason behind it, but it just doesn't change the fact that it's there, right? The horizon lock is a thing. I just haven't been able to get it to work. So when I was recording at Bass Pro, same situation, I thought I was in the free free flow, free form format. And I thought I was gonna have a horizon lock with that. I spent maybe 30 minutes looking through the settings, trying to find the specific setting for horizon lock, knowing a shot I kind of wanted to do in front of the store. Couldn't find the horizon lock setting looked it up online, found out it was part of the freeform format or that big square format. We tried to, I thought I was recording in that format and put it into the post software that they have and I didn't record it in the right format. So therefore I didn't get horizon lock. Whereas with the GoPro, you hit a setting and it does the horizon lock, that's it. It should just be, you know, you got your wide angle, your linear, your, your, your super wide, 
it should just be an option in there to check a box and say linear is on, uh, horizon lock is on. So then no matter the orientation of the camera, you're getting your horizon lock. So just a little bit of software, things like that, I just didn't quite appreciate and didn't quite like. Not to say that the GoPro is perfect because it really isn't. And there's a few things on both I don't quite like, but that's just a few nitpicks I had with this. The major, major, major negatives are expandable memory is not a thing. You pick your memory when you purchase it and that's it. I think I got the 64, never really had an issue, but it's not expandable. Secondary to that, the battery is also not expandable. And the the rationale of the what I've heard reviewers say, and I don't think I've heard the company say it, but obviously the narrative is, well, you could put it back in here and it can charge. Well, okay, we were doing a 45 minute workout. I put it on my trainer and it lasted 30 minutes. Obviously it depends on the settings, what type of um, battery life you're gonna get. So then I had to take it out, put it in here. I then handed this to her and said, okay, go record. Uh, and she had this in her hand. And then once it was charged a little bit more, we put it back on the pendant. I just don't like that. I, I get this whole form factor. There's, there's, I don't see a way of getting a battery in and out of this thing with how nice and, and tight the materials are and the way they've designed it. And then to get this water resistant, it's not waterproof to water resistant. I totally get it. And then obviously, what battery do you use at that point? Do you use a GoPro style battery? Do you make your own battery? It's all expenses that can that can be built into the camera that makes this thing more expensive by putting a proprietary battery in here, but it's a pain. And I don't know any other way around it to get this form factor, this tiny little thing, this, put it together, this whole little deal and situation. I 100% get why they couldn't put a removable battery and the memory is something else, but for sure the removable battery, I 100% understand it, but it just doesn't help the fact that it's there and it's a negative and you can change it out. My GoPro, I have a lot. I have quite a, probably about five, six, maybe even seven batteries for this thing. I'm never worried. I've got them in a little case that I got from Amazon. If, and I know they're all charged. If this one runs out, take it out. And I've done it a bunch. I've been um, at my brother-in-law's pool shooting underwater for a long, long time, for hours and hours. And you can see the battery's going down fine. Jump out, dry off, change the battery out. Never have to worry about the memory because it's got a micro SD slot in there. And I think I have a 500 or a two, whatever, 250. Don't have to worry about the memory and I don't have to worry about the battery. If you have to change it out, fine. I've also got the Volta stick, which is the, the handle that GoPro have with the battery inside. You plug it into the, the port and you can continuously charge while using it. So that, all that in that one package checks a lot of boxes and 45 minutes roughly with this. And I was thinking, okay, they told me 45 minutes for this, our workout's 45 minutes and it didn't last that long. Again, depending on settings. It's extended with this, but if you're doing water water stuff, you're in a pool or whatever, 45 minutes. The workaround is you turn it off, you turn it on. You turn it off, you turn it on. You consistently do little short, little short bursts um, with the risk of miss missing things. Same problem I had with the GoPro and I have with this. When you're in a water situation, you hit the button and you think you're recording and it might be you've already pressed it once or it's already recording and you've stopped recording. I did that quite a few times. That's on me. That's a experience thing of knowing when you're recording, when you're not, but it's a simple thing. And same thing if you're handing this off to somebody, as long as you see the red light, you're good, but, but it can be knocked, right? It can be hit, it can be turned off. And then in that point, you're not recording and you think you're capturing something. So there's a, a few cool moments I wanted to get and I didn't because I'd hit the button. But that is also a thing with the GoPro. I thought I was recording and I wasn't. It's a me thing. Could be. Tell me in the comments if it's a me thing. I, I'm a big man, I can handle it. And I guess a little positive on the end, you can get, well, it's, it's obvious, I've already mentioned it. You can get this in some very interesting spots and that is a cool way of getting very cool transitions. So we put it in our cup holder in the car, me and my wife looked in and it's kind of cute, you know, put it on the windows, put it on this, that and the other, all sorts of weird little small spaces that you really couldn't use it for anything else. So here's a little sneak peek. My son and I are going to be creating a movie and we're basically going to recreate the movie Cars, but with his toy cars, right? So it's just going to be a little fun thing with me and him where we're going to figure out some filmmaking and learn across because I, I don't know, filmmaking, he's four, so neither does he, but just have some fun together and recreate this little movie that he loves. 
So he, there's this first shot I've been trying to figure out for a little while, and this kind of ties into the unique places you can put this. There's the opening scene of that movie is um, Lightning McQueen in his, in his trailer and a view from behind, and he's kind of silhouetted with the the tunnel of the trailer and the light behind uh, in front of him and the, the stadium in front of him. And he's talking to himself, he's giving himself a pep talk. So I've been trying to figure out how the heck to get this and we haven't got all of our stuff together yet. So we haven't really even started. But that's the one thing I wanted to start with because it's kind of the opening scene and we'll just go from there. I tried to figure it out with my Sony, I tried to figure it out with my phone and GoPro I didn't, but that actually could be an option. This thing in a little toy, you think of the, the a toy truck and its trailer, it's teeny tiny and getting a camera in there this is probably the only thing I can actually get in and get a decent shot. The only other way around it was I was putting the camera at the back of the truck and covering it over with a blanket so that it just looked dark. But this thing can actually fit in there if I want and I can monitor the shot from this remotely. I like that. It's just a little bit of extra, right? A little bit of coolness and that's just a little bit of something for you guys. And I don't know how long it's gonna take us to film this movie, but there you go. Who's this camera for? It's for anyone who's considering the GoPro, something that's easy to use, that you can give to other people and put it in unique scenarios. You can wear it, you can put it on the end of a, a pole and, and be pretty discreet with filming. And I, I don't say discreet in a weird way, but just not gathering a lot of attention when you're potentially filming some stuff. You know, if I'm doing uh, filming my son at the park and I got this little thing, no one's gonna bat an eye at it. If I've got my GoPro, which I've done, and it kind of gets a little bit of attention. And then again, I think beyond that, it's like, why is this guy filming his kid at the park? It's a little bit odd. And, and I just, you see people do selfies and you see people, you know, doing TikToks and whatever and you just think, yeah, okay, interesting. That's, they're doing that in public. Okay. So I don't really want to be that guy. So having someone like this is, is discreet and nice and not have to worry about uh, someone saying, hey, why are you doing this? Or just look at you funny because you're doing social media in public. Okay, my conclusion, great camera. I've actually really enjoyed using it. My wife's had a good fun using it. My son has really enjoyed wearing it and being a cameraman, right? Having it on his chest and running around um, recording stuff. It, it's cute and it's a nice addition to anyone's camera thought portfolio or camera arsenal. Uh, it just gives you a few different options. The quality is not 100% as good as the GoPro, but it's for YouTube for sure, it's good quality because most people watch it in 1080p and, and in HD. So for that type of stuff, you really can't fall off with this. And it comes with a bunch of accessories. The GoPro doesn't. I had to buy a bunch of accessories for that thing and this comes with them. So that's my conclusion. I do actually think it's a very good action camera it's not a camera it's an action camera would recommend at least checking it out if you're thinking about it so that's it that's my full review of the insta 360 go 3. i always have problems with these names because they're always so long the insta 360 go 3. so if you like me and you like tech and you're into family stuff and please like please comment please subscribe we really appreciate any comments and any questions i'll more than happy to get back to you in the comment section and we'll see you in the next video have a good one didn't. Have a good one. So please like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate all of y'all. You're fantastic. Please watch. Please watch till the end. If you don't, you'll never see this dumb stuff that I put at the end. All right.